Dale, mijo, dale, dale. It's like, it's like we're getting ready for a soccer game. And we're back. We're back. We're back. Yahweh after 90 minutes. It's back. Hope everyone out there is doing well. Your host, Eddie and Diego. What's up? What's up, my man? How you doing? How you feeling today? I'm feeling old. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Shout out your it was your birthday yesterday. So man, um, how was that? Oh man, just another lap. I feel great though. I feel great. COVID birthday. I'll remember <laughs> this one forever for sure. So, yeah, man. The corona the corona birthday. So yeah, man. Happy, happy belated birthday. You know, it's a crazy how a year has changed. Um, but you look good. You look good. Liking that Argentina jersey. Yeah, let's go, baby. La Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> nice, brother. Nice. Well, once again, welcome to Yahweh After 90 Minutes. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in again for the segunda episode, the second episode, um, with a really cool guest. Uh, we can't wait to bring him on. Um, you know, but just a little recap. Uh, going back to our first episode, we're super blessed and thankful for everyone that took the time to saw it. Um, much, uh, very, very appreciative of all of you guys that, uh, that took the time to watch it. And you know, one of the things that stuck out to me on that first, uh, that part, first podcast, first episode was, you know, there was a, a girl that left a message, um, and she was, you know, I'm not, I'm not either either an athlete or a business owner, but hey, you guys are bringing good, good vibes, um, you know, to our current situation. So. After that, I was like, hell yeah, you know, let's, let's roll, man. Like, that's what it's all about. That's what, that's the type of vibes you want to bring. But, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a pretty cool, crazy ride. Um, you know, I can't even go outside the streets without getting paparazzis like flashing at me um, because of, you know, the huge hit we have, we've had. So yeah, man, it's been, uh, it's been a blessing. So we appreciate all the followers, um, everyone that, that tuned in and gave us a like. Yeah. I'm sorry if I'm making all these faces over here. I'm, I'm trying to keep Gio inside the box right now. He's like, hey, bro, can I come in now? Hey, bro, can I come in now? I'm like, but, yeah, man, um, back to that first episode. Wow, that, that was something, man. I, I would turn it on, and I'd be like, god damn, is that how I sound? I sound so stupid. But it was good. It was good feedback. It was good to hear, actually, how you sound when you speak to people. So I'm sure we're just going to get better, man, like Eddie. This is good stuff. After the first one, I was like, let's go, man. I can't wait to get our first person, our first guest in. Yeah. Get it going. So, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, I'll start it off on my end. I mean, what, what was it? Mother's Day and Cinco de Mayo, right? That's what's been happening so far. Man, Cinco de Mayo is always a good, good thing to celebrate, but, you know, unluckily, unlucky. Not to celebrate it outside. Mother's Day, freak, man. I mean, it landed on the same day as uh, Mexican yeah, Mother's Day. So that was pretty cool. You know, Mexican Mother's Day is always on the 10th. So that was cool. And, I mean, that's pretty much all I got for you, man. Happy happy Mother's yeah. Day to all the mothers, you know. Happy and happy belated Mother's Day to all the Madrecitas. Mother and, you know, to all the you know, mothers I've shared good times with. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh yeah, Diego, I mean Cinco de Mayo again fell on the Taco Tuesday, which uh which was crazy and we're stuck in uh you know inside the house because of the coronavirus. So, you know, how crazy is that? But yeah, again, you know, happy belated mother uh Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Uh here in Chicago is a pretty pretty shitty day, so you know, we didn't we didn't do much. Um but yeah, like I said, happy happy Mother's Day to every or belated Mother's Day to everyone. A todas las madrecitas, Felicia de las madres. Uh, shout out to my mi madre. Um, you know, I still have a chancla in my, in, you know, kind of, in, in the back of me here. You know, somewhere I have a, a mark of that chancla that chasing down. Chancla. But you know, dude, I got the belt, or maybe <laughs> the cable, one or the other. 
<laughs> yeah, man, that chancla, that chancla had like a tracking device, you know, like they threw it, you're, they, they, you couldn't get away, man. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, Mother's Day is always, always a good one to celebrate. Like I said, it, we were lucky enough to celebrate it. Well, you know, for people that don't celebrate it all on Mexican Mother's Day, maybe this weekend was a little unfortunate because you kind of had to celebrate both Mother's Day at the same time. But I mean, yeah. regardless, we made the best out of it uh what's next eddie memorial day weekend you gonna be out yeah. going or what Oof. i don't know man i don't even want to talk it i don't i don't even want to think about not being able to go out you know so um yeah man it's just i'm sure it'll be crazy again we probably won't do anything other than some barbecue maybe but you know other than that that's uh that's pretty much it but you know, I think I think you and I are a little bit antsy and just kind of get get the ball rolling and, and get things going um, when it comes down to yes. But before we get into that, a little recap on the first episode, just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, there's really much not to it. We can't go back and fix things. I think everything we pretty much said was pretty much straight from you know as it came right so that's yeah. the thing it was raw it was good um if anything we just want to make sure that people understand what the concept of this is which is Yahweh after 90 minutes meaning what was your moment moment that pretty much brought you back to level one or ground or to your feet to the ground and said hey what am I going to do am I going to keep doing what I've been doing the whole time I was being raised with my parents or am I going to avoid sports? Am I going to avoid my, how I was go, growing up and I'm going to do it my own way. Am I going to start my career? Am I going to venture on to do my own life? That's what we want to hear. And the good thing about it is that we picked the best person to start off the Yahweh moment. So yeah. 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 Without a doubt, right. man, Eddie, let's, uh, let's get into it. In other words, Yahweh. Let's Yahweh, do. let's go. Um, Fucking go. Yeah, so, you know, it's no no longer a secret. You know, our boy, uh, Armando Giovanni Tello Jr. Tello. A.K.A. Tello, wait. Tello, Tello, a.k.a. La Bestia. Super, super pumped, man. He's uh, He brings a thousand percent of energy every time. He uh, he gives it his all. Um, you know, D, what's, uh, you know, outside of us already, you know, learning and, and knowing his story, but like, can you give me a little bit of, you know, background as to what was the first time you met, you met Deo? Yeah. So, um, before I get into that, as soon as we started talking about this show, uh, we, me and Eddie talked about who would be the first person we would bring on to the show, who would really kick it off like no other. And I remember Eddie saying, Gio. And I know a lot of Geos. And right away, I knew which Geo he was talking about. I was like, yes, let's do it. His fucking energy is what we need. We need someone like this. His perseverance is great. That's going to be our topic. That's who we're going to focus on. So right away, I knew who he was talking about. And as soon as he called him, he said, yes. We're like, let's fucking go. We're, we're on. Let's go. We're on. Uh, I met Gio a couple years playing into growing up, I guess I should say, growing up playing in Waukegan. Uh, if you played in Waukegan or in the Lake County area, you knew that any player that came from Chicago to play was a no-no. I mean, what I'm trying to say is that they would call players from Chicago, you know, obviously to win the local league. And when they would call players in Chicago, you know, obviously you wanted to beat them. So, Gio came, I think I was, it was right after high school. He was a flashy player. You know, he had a man bun. One of the first man buns I saw after my man bun. And I was like, whoa, 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 you have a man bun too? What the fuck? So um, Gio came, flashy, colored hair, colored shoes, loud. And I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I want to beat him. And he's not going to come into our town and, you know, run it so that's how i met geo and that's right away that's the first impression i got of geo i was like all right this guy's trying to get body slammed no but yeah i was like 
that was my first impression of Gio. And then obviously as time progressed, I got to know who Gio was and I, I, I gained more respect for him. And I was like, wow, this fucking cat is not just a cocky sucker. He's a, he's actually a, he's a person to be followed. I was like, wow, this guy, this guy's electric. Like I, I, I would want to have him on my team. You know, he's not just a cocky sucker that has a man bun and he's really good. This guy actually, yeah. Who is he? <laughs> Yahweh. All right. Yahweh, my turn. Um, and I'll do it real quick. Yeah. I met Gio, you know, back when we were, you know, younger, when I see, say teens, uh, we played a final together. Um, after that final, we lost the final. He got a red card, man. Uh, but he was giving it all, you know, during his time in the field. Uh, he got a red card. Um, long story short, we ended up losing that game. And, you know, um, everyone, every son, everyone besides that guy, like he was trying, you know, his heart out, man. And I was like, damn, like that, that, that kid, man, has some passion for this game, you know, and, and I would never forget him and I'd never forget him. You know, we, um, we, we kept playing, we, we, uh, kept playing with a couple of other leagues, but, you know, that, that first, that first, you know, memory of him, you know, crying after that first game, like. It's like damn, like that kid brings brings 100% every time he, you know, he goes into the field, and you know I would never forget that, and you know we we stayed in touch, and you know outside of that, you know, and outside of us knowing his story, we that's why we want to bring him on, because he brings a thousand percent, you know, even, you know a thousand, a hundred, whatever, a thousand percent every time he goes to do something. So that is one of the biggest things where we want to bring him on, and you know I think he's uh, he's definitely he's ready to jump in. I think so too, Eddie. I think, um, you know, to just piggyback on that, like I told Eddie, I was like, what, what are going to be some of the first people we bring into? And I mean, it's a fucking no brainer. We want to bring Chicago natives. We obviously want to get our word out here in Chicago first more than anything. So we're like, why not? Why not bring Gio? Why not keep bringing people from Chicago from the get? I mean, yeah, obviously we have a lot of people in mind, but dude, let's focus on the people that we have here now and, and go from there. Yeah, so we're like, yeah for yeah, sure. Let's go with Gio. So um, yeah, he, he, I'll let you I'll let you pretty much just touch base on who the fuck Gio is. I'm sure the people that are watching know who Gio is and the people that are that don't, you're in for a You should know this cat. You should know I'm this gonna, cat. Uh, let me text him to make sure he's still alive, all right? <laughs> yeah, no. So he's, you know, grew up in a Chicago native kid. Um, you know, he's a, he's a professional soccer player for the MASL, which is the major arena soccer league here in the United States. You know, um, again, he's a Latino. He's a proud Latino. Um, he's, he's Mexicano, Puerto Rican, and Italian. Man, you, you could tell by those three three, you know, races, he's, he brings the, he brings the heat every time, you know. But he, he, uh, look, he looks Middle Eastern to me, man. That <laughs> motherfucker does not look Mexican or <laughs> whatever, but yeah, keep going. Yeah, but again, you know, you, you talk to him, he, can bring, he brings that energy, amazing, amazing energy. Um, again, you know, he uh, grew up in the, in the west side of Chicago, Humble Park area, um, you know, and, and he brings he brings it every time he, he gets into the field. That's what I love about him. Um, I think the biggest thing about his story is just I guess you'll you'll just wait and, and hear. But uh, but again, you know, he'll definitely bring that heat um, in anything he does, I'm sure. Um, but yeah, overall, he's uh, we're super excited to have him on as, as the guest. And uh, and hopefully he's he'll be joining here in, uh, in the next couple of seconds. Yeah, like I said. Or like Eddie said, his his perseverance, the fact that this guy got uh, got knocked down to the floor a lot, you know, plenty of times, and you know, people get up when they feel, when they fall down, right? I think it's just a natural habit. But the way that this guy came back up was just unique. So um, we're like, we want to hear this. We want to hear more about it. If you follow him on social media, you kind of get the gist or even if you're a close friend, but we wanted to get obviously into the needy greedy until into the what exactly happened. I just texted him to get on. So he should be getting on here shortly. Obviously, you know, with 
the whole Zoom thing. Hopefully he gets on better than or sooner than later. But but yeah, um, you know, there he is. Look at him. But I think, yeah, Dale. <laughs> to what Eddie got to say, like, there was no better person to get on the show to start it off than Armando, Gio, Tejo, La What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, man? My How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing How you good, doing? guys. How you guys doing? I'm feeling good, man. Good. Pretty, uh, pretty good, pretty, man. Uh, good about good. this, man. <laughs> oh, Hopefully sure, you have man. your drink in your hand. Salud. <laughs> Well, before Cheers, we start, before I'm ready, guys. Salute. Before we start, salute to my birthday. Thank you for hat for you know sharing your hey, time. Happy birthday, man! Happy birthday, Diego. Yeah, man. For Ooh. sure, for sure. Well, yeah, like I said, it's no secret anymore. Everyone, welcome to to the to the Yahweh After Ninety Minutes podcast. Armando Giovanni Tello <laughs> Jr. A.K.A. Yes. Mosones La Bestia. How you feeling, man? Things are good. I'm feeling good, man. I'm, I'm I'm pretty pumped about this, man. Tell a little story. Talk with you guys a bit, you know, get it, get it going. Hey, yo, before we get into the needy gritty, we already heard your story, so we know what you got, man. But just a quick few seconds. Remember when Eddie called you and you didn't want to answer and you're like, what the fuck am I getting into <laughs> right now? Like, what are these guys going to answer or ask me? And then next thing you know, you're like, shit, man, is this happening right now? Like, I want to do Let's this. Go. <laughs> this, this is legit. Let's keep doing this. That was great, man. Yeah, that, man. It, that was awesome. It, 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 it felt good, man. It felt good. Like, I, I literally felt like that was the main part, bro. Like, it, 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 was, it felt <laughs> legit. It felt like it, we should have done it right, in, right there and then. Like, it, it was pretty awesome, man. I was nervous. <laughs> Not well, like now, though. Now it's pretty. Nah, man. Well, intense. hey, brother. Let loose, man. The whole po- the whole point of this podcast is be yourself, and that you know if you bring a thousand percent every time you get you know you speak to someone or you know when you go into the field, right? And uh, and that's that's what that's what we liked about you, and you know you were a no brainer to bring on to the show. So, you know, I, I wanna I wanna get this started and and sort of you know get the ball rolling. And I want everyone to hear your story. But before that, you know, let, let's uh, let's do a quick, 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 uh, either a Cristiano or Messi. One. One of them you, you ah, can have in your right, team. Cool. One of them. One of them. Uh, <laughs> man, I got it. Oh, man. I, to take, I love Messi, man. I got to take Cristiano. I got to take... All right. He's a player of training. He's never going to stop working and building himself, so... that Yeah, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. I mean, I'm sure, you know, that's always 50-50, right? But, but Cristiano, Cristiano is definitely a hard worker, um, and Messi is a gifted player, so... You know, you know. Thank God we're living exactly. in those. Exactly. Thank God we're living in in that era, right? We're we're lucky to see the both of them play um, right now. So, so you know, next. Uh, but yeah, yes. man. Like like I said, you know, we're we're pleased to have you. We're super pumped. Um, but but let's let's get the show on the road. And uh, you know, first of all, you know, tell you I think one of the biggest things that that we wanted to kind of start start from the beginning to end, right? Like. We want to hear your, you know, you growing up in West, you know, in the West Side of Chicago, Humboldt Park area. Like, give us a quick, you know, glimpse into the life of, of Dayo, you know, growing up um, in the West Side of Chicago. Oh man, well, um, I, was, I grew up uh, young. I was born, I was born and raised in Humboldt Park in the West Side. Um, I moved around a couple, um, but um, but it, it wasn't a bad thing. It was actually a good thing, you know, because meeting new people and everything, it, it, it never stopped me from becoming better, you know, or, or, or learning new things because I was always in a different environment. So it actually helped me like always being hungry, hungry and keep going and going and learning new things because everybody's different. So you got to adapt and that helped me. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All right, we're good. He had to take All a, good, he, man. He had, he had to take a piss break. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. All good, brother. I don't All know. Good. I don't know where I left off, but 
I don't know no. where it froze, but yeah, it's a little bit laggy. It's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. So growing up in the west, you know, west side of Chicago, Humble Park yeah, area, so... you definitely super driven. Yeah, yeah. I, I I was definitely driven, man. Like being around different people, like uh, different areas, because I'm I, I would go move around a lot. So different being around different areas, I had to learn different people. So I never could be the same. I had to like keep trying and trying and being different. So that's what kind of gave me the hunger at always persevering, getting better and better. You know, being in different areas and it goes back to kind of how I said they are like, you know, being in different back backgrounds, eventually as you get older, you're like, oh fuck, I remember that. I remember this, I remember that. And essentially that's how you kind of tailor your own person uh, yes, exactly. So, you know, that was your childhood. From the story that you told us, it kind of seemed like your dad was also a big influence into your childhood. You know, obviously your whole family was too, right? But in yes. particular, your dad. And the, the way that I know you too is from your dad. Like you always, you know, talk about your dad. Your dad was like a like a coach to you throughout your whole life, even if he wasn't your coach, you get what I mean, yeah. because that's how my dad was to me. Tell us about that. Um, well, man, growing up with my dad, it was, it was pretty awesome. Um, being young uh, during his time, it, it, it was, I was living in a time where there was a lot of great players coming from Mexico, plus the players from Chicago. Um, so they would battle it out. And I was, I was young. I didn't get the time to see my dad in major division. But as I grew up, I seen him in veteran division with like big teams like Sapotlan, um, playing in uh, at the lake with uh, Colmex or Cali. Um, I, I seen my dad, like his name, everybody is Negro, El Negro, El Negro. And that kind of like, you know, opened up my eyes to like, you know, I was, I was destined to something big, bigger than, than nothing, you know? So, so my dad's like motivation and his name, like kind of pushed me to play soccer. I started playing on a team at 10 years old. My first team was with Atlas and Clasa, but everything was because of him. Like, soccer was because of him, and and I'm truly grateful for, for that. But at the same time, it kind of, like, put a shadow on me because they always looked at me as El Hijo del Negro, you know? So yeah, that's kind of hard. That's good that you bring that up, Theo, because it's true. And, you know... Being the shadow of someone, I'm not obviously you always wanted to overcome your dad, right? Um, yeah, yeah, of course. Being the shadow of someone always was like el hijo, el hijo, or someone. But would you say that kind of led to be the, the person that you are, like being such an affirmative, take action person? Like, you know, when I tell people, when I describe you, you're like a loud person, but not in an annoying way, but you're like, you take action. If, yes, exactly. If a person, if it's a room with five people, we know who you are. Or if it's a people with a hundred people, we know who you are because you are a person to be heard of. You, yeah, you thank make you your presence. You know what I mean? And yeah, like, thank you. So, do you think that kind of relates to that? Um, it, it does. It um, it's actually a two way thing. Like it, it, it hurts it. It hurts me, and it actually made me better. Um, it hurt me in a way where, where I didn't want to be that little kid anymore you know I like I, I've always been looked at as the young kid as a little kid maybe to this day I'm, I'm yeah I'm 30 years old right now but people still look at me like that young kid and uh and and that's what kind of kind of hurt me but the positive thing about it is that um that without him I wouldn't be me without without El Negro Teo I wouldn't be me and that's that's my name that's been my nickname La Bestia I got it while I was in Puerto Rico with the national team. But besides that, like, like I'm made off of my dad. And if you want to compare it to the last dance, look at what Kobe said about Jordan. Uh, Kobe yeah. said without, without, without Jordan, there's no him. Everything that he, that Jordan does, it's all about him. And that's how it is with my father. And, and it's a big plus, you know, big, 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 big plus. And, and, um, and that's what made me better. Not just my dad, but, just the, the, his, the history of everything made me want to be, be part of history. And, and I don't know if young players look at it like that now, but, but I do. And I, and, and I know a lot of people my age, like you guys, 
you, we had dreams, man. We had dreams, and it and it it didn't go sometimes the way we wanted it. And yeah, I played pro indoor, but that's I I I love it. Indoor's number one, but I wanted to go to go farther than that, and and we all did, and we. We just lived in a time where we thought we had it, and then boom, you know, everything just yeah. hit you in the face. Because I know you, Eddie, and I know you, you Diego. Like we're kids at heart, bro, and and we're we're men, but we're kids at heart, and we're still the same person we were when we were kids. Period. And nobody's gonna take that away from us. It's definitely yeah, a, man. It's definitely a different generation. Um, I think Eddie will walk you through, like you know, how was it after you know growing up with you know. Your, your dad and your family talk a little bit more of you know high school and after that what happened what yeah you, oh man well well high school um so I was living in the city um in eighth grade I went to Cleveland Elementary on um, Byron in Albany and um got into dumb situations and we decided to move you know my mom decided to move she was looking for a house um next thing you know we ended up moving to the west suburbs um where i went to glenbard east but before that like you know i i uh, if we could touch on football like i i kind of jumped into got it, into it, the football like, scene right yeah i got into the football <laughs> scene but hey, i got that, into the football that's where scene. the puerto rican side of you came out hey, <laughs> it came out hard man baseball wasn't my thing but but football man i was hungry for that man so like when i was like in uh in fifth grade i went to armor our Armour Elementary in Bridgeport. And um, my uncle, my uncle Jose Morales, Joey, uh, big Joey was living with us. And uh, my parents wouldn't sign my slip to play football at, at uh, McWayne Park on Halstead and 31st. So they wouldn't sign it. And so I, I went around their back and I had my uncle sign it. And my uncle signed wow. it. I played football and from there, from fifth grade up, football. So that's all you knew, year, huh? I got to. Yeah, man, it was it was pretty dope, man. Freshman year, I ended up getting to uh to Glenbard East, and I wasn't into soccer, man. I I know there was a lot of rules about big shin guards and a bunch of rules about soccer. Then I started seeing people get subbed out like in ten minutes, like five players at once. So I was like, you know, you know what, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna do football. I'm gonna keep going, and man, I was I I was I was really really good, man. Got to my uh, sophomore year, I played at uh, Glenbard South. First year I played at Glenbard East. I went to a lot of high schools. Glenbard South was my second year, sophomore year. Right there, man, kickoff returns. I was killing it. We played at uh, NIU because the Cal High School. So, so you were the the first Devin Hester or what? <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, Devin Hester, bro. I talk about this, man. <laughs> I talk about this. I think I would have, man. I think I would have been in, man. I will t I'll tell you. I think I would have been in that draft, like probably like three years after him. Man. Um, oh man. So we played at NIU, NIU, whatever, go, let me speed up, go to NIU. We played DeKalb High School because they had a hurricane in DeKalb, so they had to use Northern, uh, Northern Illinois uh, Stadium. So we yeah. played there by the worst team. I'm like, you know what, let's get it. Like, if you guys don't want to play, go home, whatever. So I'm like, I'm going to run this back. So, man, I get the ball, kick off, run it back to the right. Everybody shifts to the right, go back to the left. I go back five yards, go all the way around and score a kickoff return, and then from there is history. Junior year, Damn. went to Elmer Park, uh, made some good records, and uh, was looked at by Missouri. Then I went to my senior year, didn't play my senior year because I did two-day practices in Glenbard North. And I went to Addison Trail, and they didn't let me play. So after that, yeah. football was man. Hey, was man, the whole fact that you got looked at by Mizzou, that's, that's already something, right? That's <laughs> That's special that I'm sure not a lot of people knew. I didn't know. I'm sure Eddie didn't know too. That's it's a fun fact. Fun fact, man. Fun fact. That that Eddie. stuck out from us from when you told us. So let's fast forward. Let's. Uh, so when you told us, I feel like um, a high school that was in the past. Then soccer arena came into play, right? Sounds like you did a little bit of college, but you already knew where you wanted to go. You were going to do soccer arena. You were going to do professional soccer arena. And some of the teams of the resume that you sent over were like, wow, you played in all these fucking teams? That's pretty <laughs> Yeah, all man. Fucking country. And you started with all these Chicago teams. And we're like, hey, one of these fucking teams were in the uh, last dance, the Chicago Sting. So that was fun. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> You're the first person to announce that. I actually brought it up to the first <laughs> 
Hey, bro, did you guys see that we were on, like, the last dance, bro, the indoor soccer? Like, going <laughs> hey, a lot of people missed that, bro. A lot of people missed that. They did not pay attention to that. So I was like, yeah, man. Oh, you so throw that in there. Yeah, yeah Gio, so, so what, what was that like, man? It seems like, like I said, you, you were a little bit, you know, sort of like a, a journeyman, right? So, you know. So can you walk us through a little bit of, about that and, and how you started okay. and, you know? All right. So, um, so the way I started indoor arena soccer, um, and this is literally how I started. Like, you know, all of us in Chicago, we play indoor and outdoor. That's, that's destined to happen because of our weather. But uh, with, um, with arena, I was playing for Maroons. And we had uh, Coplas, the coach Coplas, yeah, the Greek. We yeah. had him. We had him as a player. He played with me on Maroons. I was young, man. I was like 14, 15 years old. So then there was Victor, which he owned. Uh, I think he owned Sports Zone back in the day. The yeah. first one. So I was one of the first ones to kind of step into the first original Sports Zone um, because of Maroons, because they played for Maroons and they were the owners of Chicago Storm. Or Victor yeah. was. So then my first game ever, my dad t takes me, you know, my dad takes me to, uh, to, the, UIC, to the UIC Pavilion. And um, the Chicago Storm played. I don't know who they played. Um, but my dad took me to their first game because um, this um, one of my dad's best friends, uh, Leo, um, I think they went to San Agustin together, college. And um, he, he gave my dad tickets to go to the game. We went to the game. And... I, I loved it. I loved it. It was freaking crazy. It was something I've never seen in my whole entire life, like of watching soccer, like indoor soccer was, was it. it was